Guys, we have to jump right in because this is breaking stuff. So hit that like and subscribe button and do it fast because Donald Trump is trying to shut us down. And the only way we can withstand that pressure from the insane MAGAs is by growing bigger and working together as a community to stop them. And guys, critically, what we're looking at tonight are two things. One, Donald Trump is angering his fans and his fans have booed him at an event, loudly booing him and critically withdrawing money from him. It's not just the big corporate Republican donors that are ditching Trump because they don't think he can win or they think he's just going to take the money and give it to um, his legal bills rather than electing himself and other Republicans, but his small donors, the people that kept on giving him money even after he was a loser ex-president who, to, to Trump's credit, was able to milk them for years. They are ditching him. In addition to the fact that all of his lies and inconsistencies have led to the police, have led to law enforcement and prosecutors, attorneys general, dropping massive bombs on him this Friday night. Till Monday, just a matter of hours, really, just a few days to come up with $464 million needed to avoid paying the judgment in the civil fraud case while he appeals. It appears New York Attorney General Letitia James is targeting two of his properties in Westchester County, just north of New York City, if he cannot pay. Court records show she filed there more than two weeks ago. It means she could seize Trump's golf club in Westchester, which is valued at nearly $16 million. Oh, yeah, Briarcliff. He also has Silver Springs Estate. It's worth more than $56 million. As Bloomberg points out, the estate was featured heavily in the civil trial, with the judge ruling the property had been wildly overvalued for years. Trump tried to claim at times it was worth as much as $291 million, often by including the value of mansions that did not exist. Ahead of Monday's deadline, the judge yesterday ordered the Trump Organization to inform the court-appointed monitor of any efforts to secure a bond. The language in the order suggests the judge wants to make sure the company does not make any misrepresentations to bond companies. A new deal between Donald Trump and the Republican National Committee is making it more likely that donor money will be spent on the former president's legal bills. According to a form obtained by NBC News, when someone donates to the RNC going forward, that money will be dispersed to a group helping Trump pay his legal fees before the National Party itself. This is being done through a new joint fundraising agreement, which dictates that RNC donations be filtered out to the Trump campaign first, then a leadership pack covering his leader legal fees, and then the RNC last. In the past, the RNC has never funneled donations directly to a candidate's PAC. The change comes just weeks after Trump had his own daughter-in-law, Lara, installed as the organization's new co-chair. Meanwhile, the Biden campaign has a new nickname for former President Donald Trump, Broke Don. The campaign put out a release yesterday hitting Trump for his poor fundraising numbers and lack of campaign events. It's titled, Not a Winning Campaign, Broke Don Hides in Basement. At a campaign reception in Houston on Wednesday night, President Biden joked about the matter, saying, quote, just the other day, a defeated looking man came up to me and said, Mr. President, I have crushing debt and I'm completely wiped out. I had to say, I'm sorry, Donald, I can't help you. Yeah, we'll put that right there. It's interesting, Joe, just last night, I got like one of those video ads that pop up before you yeah. watch a video. And it was like Donald Trump Jr.'s face saying, give us five dollars, chip in. I was like, wow, God, you guys are scraping. Knowing that Trump has put his family in charge of the RNC or being a Republican candidate down ballot. I've been one of those before uh -huh. where you're just praying that the RNC can help you out. And knowing all of that money is going for a guy who's just completely beyond cash strapped. I mean, for a lot of legitimate reasons. And again, we said this yesterday, there are a lot of billionaires that would not have $500 million lying around. 
But they really are. He has all along. But they're really leveraging his campaign yeah. for his personal use. And it's these are the sort of things that may not show up in stupid polls in March. Right. 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 This is the stuff uh, <laughs> that as you make that final turn yeah. after Labor Day, this is mm -hmm. when things start. I thought. And I'm not saying this is going to happen, but I thought Stuart Stevens had a pretty good insight. He said everybody's talking about how this race looks right now. He said to Stuart, and he knows a thing or two about campaigns, he yeah. says it's looking like 1980 in reverse, <laughs> where, you know, Jimmy Carter, Ronald Reagan, all year, too close to call. Yeah. And things just flipped near the end. And that's what Stewart says. And if you look how things are lining up, we don't know what's going to happen over the next six months. But man, is if if you look at any of the fundamentals about politics, th this is this looks like this looks like Stewart may be onto something. And Alex told me they got Stewart spite here. Play Stewart real quick and we'll talk about it. My image of the Trump campaign is somebody walking around with a paper bag full of water. Um, I don't think it's going to leak, but I think when this thing goes, it's going to go quickly. And I think there's a good chance that we're going to have a situation like 1980 in reverse, where Carter was tight with Reagan until the middle of October, and then kind of the bottom fell out for uh, Carter. I, I always tell my kids, if things look like they're too good to be true, they're too good to be true. And if you're looking at something that just doesn't make sense... Right. You know, there's a reason. And here, we're looking at something that makes no sense. This guy is getting crazier by the day. He's got no money. The campaign is just broke. People don't want to give money. He's down 200,000 contributors to where he was this time in the cycle four years ago. Biden's raised $71 million. People are begging, literally begging, literally begging. And any idiot that runs some like podcast, they're begging. They're calling contributors and saying, how can I help? I want to write checks for Joe Biden. Put that number up again. <laughs> what, what did Tip O'Neill say about money in politics? Uh, it's the mother's milk of politics. <laughs> and right now, Joe Biden's got all he wants. And Donald Trump is a little thirsty. Getting crushed here. And here's the most important thing. It's the small donors, too. Yeah. It's not just the big. It's the small donors. And why? Because I've always talked about my grandmom giving money to the PTL club. At some point, you figure out what Jim and Tammy Faye are really up to. <laughs> and in this case, they know if they're writing twenty five dollar checks to Donald Trump, it's not going to make America great again. Mm. It's going to Donald Trump's lawyers. Yeah. And that is like, if the if the if the polls were right, why is Joe Biden getting a lot of money? You know, some of it's big checks, some of it's small donor checks, um, and and Donald Trump is, is is not getting anything. But I think that the you know we talk we don't talk enough about Trump's weaknesses, and the fundamentals of his campaign are very weak. You know, it's like. He doesn't have any money. He has 91 counts against him, four indictments, trials that he's like trying to trying to balance. And he can't raise any money. He's got to raise half a million dollars by Monday. And then with about, you know, I think that we need to brace for the I bet you'll agree with this. Like the polls might not change in Biden's favor until the fall. Right. Oh, you know, no, like I, that's just like that's just when people are going to start to pay attention. Well, Gala, New York Attorney General um, Letitia James has taken the initial step to begin to the process of seizing Trump's assets. She can officially start the process in four days if Trump's unable to post this massive bond. But as trial lawyer Kevin O'Brien told Forbes, uh, Letitia James is, quote, not going to take a stake and drive a sign through the front yard that says this building has been seized. It's a legal process. It's not like she's going to be selling these properties uh, next week. But what what options does Trump really have at this point? Well, when he says he's ruling out bankruptcy, that means he's going to file for bankruptcy any minute now. <laughs> right. No, because Trump lies like I breathe. I mean, right. He just inhales oxygen, exhales lies. He's his companies. Now, he's never declared personal bankruptcy. He wouldn't have to hear his companies have declared bankruptcy at his orders four times before. So I wouldn't rule it out. Uh, but I think that the, the, as a citizen, the thing that's most frightening is there seems to be no legal uh, bar to him taking this money from hostile foreign powers.
from maybe some billionaire in China, billionaire in Saudi Arabia, billionaire in Russia. This would compromise our national security if he were to be returned to the White House. And he's a 50-50 shot to return. So, I mean, I think that for all citizens is a thing that ought to really terrify us, is that Mr. Trump could very well be beholden to whoever uh, puts up this bond. So, uh, Alex, first of all, welcome to the lead. Good to have you here. Um, so, uh, Paul's not the first one to suggest this. Uh, Joy Behar also made a, suggest a similar suggestion, expressing concern that some, some, some lender or donor is going to uh, give Trump the money and that will jeopardize national security. So yesterday, Trump's lawyer, Alina Haba, was asked about this on Fox. Take a listen. Is there any effort on the part of your team to secure this money through another country, Saudi Arabia or Russia, as Joy Behar seems to think? Well, there's rules and regulations that are public. I can't speak about strategy that requires certain things, and we have to follow those rules. Like I said, this is manifest injustice. It is impossible. It's an impossibility. I believe they knew that. I mean, that wasn't a no. Yeah, it wasn't really an answer at all. It wasn't an answer at all, right. Um, and, and, you know, I bet you if she uh, w w was ready for the question, she may have answered differently. But how you're not ready for the question is really interesting. It wasn't just Joy Behar. It was Trump's uh, niece, Mary Trump, also suggested this uh, on X as well about this possibility of, you know, when... when well, Jared got $2 billion in investment funds from the Saudis. I mean, it's not wild. Absolutely. I mean, I mean, the, the idea that some foreign person or even some domestic person um, would want to, you know, front the cost uh, of, of this in order to have leverage of the next president, I don't think is is ridiculous. And I think the idea of foreign interference is just as serious as domestic interference. What happens if some billionaire also wants to have a favor once Trump is in the of office? Here's the thing. Look, there's a lot of wrongdoing on the part of Donald Trump here. But the fact that his attorney and his supporters are having to defend nonsense by Joey Behar, Joey Behar and his well, niece. Paul just made the uh, who, same. Who, who, the, you, you're but I Paul. actually first heard from it from John Dean, who was the Nixon White House counsel. He knows about criminality. And he's the one who first raised this when I talked to him. I, I think the campaign knows full well the, the consequences of that. There's no way I could see them actually doing that because it would put him in such tremendous uh, jeopardy and, and blackmail situation. I don't see them, them moving forward with Let's that. change the subject for a sec. Let's get some perspective now with CNN political analyst Maggie Haberman. Maggie, thanks so much for being with us. So Trump is lashing out at Letitia James on social media as she's already taking steps to potentially seize his properties in New York. In talking to your sources, how consumed is the former president by this threat to his Today, business empire? Served. Today we prove that no Look, he's he's very, very concerned about it. It is not the, you know, the only thing that he talks about, but he does rail about uh, Letitia James in private. He does talk about how unfair he thinks the case is. There's no difference for us between what he's saying publicly and what he's saying privately. The one thing I would say is uh, I understand, I know that he is opposed personally to filing uh, for bankruptcy. He has was very scarred by uh, the bankruptcies that were filed against his companies in the early 1990s. This one would be personal to him in a different way, but it is not something that has been totally ruled out as a possibility. Now, again, I don't think it's likely. It's something that could hurt him uh, politically in a campaign, but it is not entirely off the table. Uh, we've seen Donald Trump use uh, things that would seemingly totally derail other candidates, other politicians to his advantage. I'm wondering mm -hmm. if you see that he might find a potential political benefit to effectively forcing Letitia James to seize his properties. That's a discussion that's taking place among some of his advisors. I don't think that Donald Trump left to his own devices wants someone taking his properties. I just don't, um, just based on everything that we know about him. But I do think that there are people who are telling him that there could be political advantage to it. And, and it's not clear to me that they're wrong. I think that, you know, if you have somebody who is running uh, for the Republican presidential nomination, they are a former president and their assets are seized, there are going to be a lot of people uh, who, who rise against this. You know, Trump has been leaning in very aggressively to the idea that business people in New York uh, are recoiling from this this judgment because they fear that it could happen to them. Now, I, I think he's overstating that, but I think unlike when he says to his supporters at rallies, you know, if they can do this to me, they can do this to you. In the case of something infect affecting business, I do think that that concerns mm -hmm. business officials um, and executives a little bit more than, say, the average voter being worried about being